Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to our uh, webinar about the circular economy and circular cities. My name is Christina Martin. I'm from Stockholm Environment Institute Talent Center or in short SEI Talent. And uh, this spring we together with Estonian Association of Environments, Environmental Management have been organizing a series of uh, different webinars around the topic of circular economy. And uh, this is our last webinar this spring or early summer. Uh, so the current webinar is financed by Estonian Environmental Investment Fund. Uh, we have more than uh, more than 200 participant registers for today. I see some people are still uh, joining us. I guess there will be more people coming in throughout the webinar. And we have a very interesting lineup of presenters this day. Uh, so this is today's agenda. Uh, we have five different presentations today. And uh, in case you have questions to our presenters, uh, please do write them into the chat box that you should see in your applications. And we, from our side, we will take uh, a look at the questions at the end of, uh, of the presentations and come back to them. Or in case there will be um, not enough time, we will then later come back to them in the, the questions and answer session at the end of our webinar. I would kindly ask you to uh, keep your uh, microphones and web cameras uh, switched off so that the um, uh, the sound of our presenters wouldn't be disrupted throughout the webinar. And the webinar is going to be recorded and during next week we will upload it to our website and we will share the link to the recording uh, to the registered uh, participants. And without a uh, longer introduction from my side, I would now give the word to our first presenter of the day to uh, Fedra Weinhus from SCI Stockholm. Fedra, are you yes. live? Yes, hi Christina. Hi everybody. Um, I'll just put on my camera and say hey. Um, I will, I prepared a short presentation um, that I will share with you now. So the aim of today is I will just explain to you a little bit about what is the importance of circular cities and then I will go into a project that we currently have funded by uh, Vinova. Um, I'm a senior research fellow here at the Stockholm Environment Institute and the head of the societal transitions unit and within our unit we focus on sustainable uh, sanitation consumption and cities and my own interest lies in cities consumption and finance actually so hence uh, my interest in the topic of circular cities um, first of all what is a circular economy i'm sure most of you know what it is already but just as a quick recap so circular economy is a um, way of um, looking at the economy through a circular uh, way instead of taking a linear approach where we use resources, we produce, distribute, consume, and then dispose of those resources within a circular economy um, uh, model. The aim is to design out waste and pollution, to keep products and materials in use, and to regenerate natural systems. We provide a little graph there about what a circular economy would look like in general. Um, People often reference the R's, um, whether there's five, seven or nine, it's reuse, repair, refurbish, recycle, and so on and so forth. Um, circular economy can also be classified in different ways. Um, if you develop circular systems, you can look at it at a micro level, so a product level, for example, how could you make a telephone more circular by reusing all the resources in it? A meso level, which is more of an industrial park where you look at symbiosis, or a macro level, which is a city or a national level circular economy. And in general, in terms of strategies, um, the strategies are oftentimes de designed for either on waste reduction, on things that the producer could do, or on things that the consumer could do. 
for example, um, you could think about um, consumer initiatives would be um, going to the sharing economy or um, reducing food waste. For a producer, we have um, the um, um, uh, ways where they can rethink their production systems um, and how they can integrate within their supply chain. Um, going circular has a lot of benefits, um, just two short ones. If we make uh, the transport industry, the food sector and construction industry circular, we would reduce emissions with 48% by 2030 and with 85% by 2050 compared to 2012. I would say that is a quite a big reduction and given cities and a lot of country strategies to become climate neutral by 2050, the circular economy would provide a lot of potential. Also, the EU has estimated that if uh, their circular economy package is implemented, it would save about 600 billion euro through waste prevention, eco design and reuse, aside from additional job creation. So again, lots of benefits. There are, of course, um, downsides or things that need further investigation within the circular economy. Um, for example, um, if you uh, reuse materials, they degrade over time, so it could require additional energy to um, refurbish products. Um, if you go to a sharing economy, there could be additional transportation um, to a pickup location. Um, so those are things that need to be investigated, but I would say overall, still the benefits definitely outweigh uh, the costs of going circular. Now, why do we focus on cities? So this is the macro level of a uh, circular economy, because about 70% of waste is generated within a city. Um, so just from a waste reduction perspective, there's a huge potential within the city. But we don't want to just look at waste. I think uh, one of the things that was often said about circular economy, it's all about waste. I would disagree with that. I think it's also about energy and resource use. So if you look at what is used in terms of in the cities, 75% of global material resources are used and 80% of global energy is used within the city. So um, large potential there to look at resource energy and waste flows. But also finally, why is city so important? Because it will be a political or it is currently already a political priority. Most of us live already in cities, or and that will still increase. Um, cities are the first point of contact that you have as an individual with your government. Um, and so, yeah, even within the EU, within the Green Deal, there is a large focus on how cities can become climate neutral. But so there are some challenges also related to uh, circular cities. And these are uh, mainly, so circularity is not something new, but it's been something that's been picked up um, within Europe, I would say in the last five years or so. Um, there have been a lot of circular economy initiatives in China, but in Europe, we're starting to do it now. And so the question there is, so what is a circular city and how would you measure that? How would you measure the circularity within a city? To date, there's some frameworks, I will come back to that later, but there's not yet a uniform answer around what those could be. Um, secondly, for cities, so what is a transition pathway? If they want to go from the current linear economy model that they have, how can they become circular? And what are the different strategies that city governments can apply? I mentioned before, there's the discussion on the R's, repair, reuse, whether it's five, seven or nine. Um, but so the question is, how can cities apply those consistently and throughout their whole um, city? And then a final one, uh, a challenge, which is something that is mentioned often within um, uh, circularity, is that it doesn't sufficiently address the social consequences of uh, circularity. For example, if we were to move to a circular economy, so how would it affect citizens, businesses, uh, industries and so on, and what are some of the policy instruments that would be needed to ensure that there's, well, not so many losers or that the losers of circularity get compensated and we create win-win for everybody. 
So um, that said, that was a little bit the background of a project that we have. So we is uh, the Stockholm Environment Insti Institute, KTH, Umeå Commune, Stockholm Vattenog Afval, Raden Cells and WSP have. It's a three year project that is funded by Vinova, the Swedish uh, Innovation Agency. And so we aim to improve circularity within cities um, and support cities in becoming more circular. So our intended or anticipated output is an urban circularity assessment framework that is robust, comprehensive, measurable, actionable, but also perceived as useful and easy to use. So we are looking, our partnership is diverse. It's research institutes, governments and um, private sector because we want to ensure that our tool that we develop or the framework that it um, tailors to cities of different sizes and different functions that we can identify opportunities for recovery of resources and energy and that we have a good mapping of the impact of the transition so we understand any social or unintended consequences of um, of this of circularity within cities. Um, in short, this is the project structure. So we have a series of work packages. So for now, where we are at, we've just done our first workshop where we co-define the scope. And at the moment, so we're reviewing existing frameworks, but also looking through different city strategies and how they can um, apply or how they have applied circularity and circular economy principles across the city. Um, our aim is to then do a pilot uh, within one or two cities, potentially, uh, and then assess the impacts of a circular transition. Um, I will briefly uh, share some findings. Um, we, we, well, our first workshop was uh, last week, where we could define the scope. And so within uh, that, we presented a little bit the work that we've done on the framework selection. So, so far we have found uh, 16 frameworks uh, that look at circular economy at macro level, so national city or national level. Eight of them look at a um, city level and eight of them is a national or regional level. Uh, one uh, framework only has qualitative indicators, but overall there's 266 indicators in all these frameworks. Um, and so I've shown a little graph there that was shared by our uh, colleagues Marina and Astilios from uh, Kaltiha University here that we work with in this project. And so our aim is that we will now look through all these frameworks with the partners shortlist indicators and agree the scope of our framework just so we ha have a common understanding of this is what circularity looks like in a city and this is how it could be measured and assessed. Secondly, uh, we started listing uh, circular city strategies. So this was more of a snowball exercise. So Jan Mertens, he will speak later from the city of Leuven. But so we just started looking at um, what cities have they or call themselves circular um, and if they call themselves circular or have they circular economy strategy, what does that strategy entail? Is there specific sectors that they look at? Is there specific activities that they talk about? And are there any needs that they identify? So, so far I would say we've looked at about uh, 15 cities, um, but we've also found, and that's the screenshot I put in there, a really interesting article from uh, Petit Bois and Leopold. Um, and they have actually looked at 83 cities. That's a publication that came out in uh, 2018. And uh, they uh, looked at uh, different city strategies. Um, and so I would say anybody who wants to do learn more about circular cities, that's a really good uh, good article um, to, to read. Um, but so in our assessment, so what we're doing now, we do want, don't want to do what they do, but we or duplicate their work. But so we're looking at other cities. So they have 83. And we will look at complementing uh, or supplementing their research. So far, we found that from the cities that we've looked at, so there's different focuses. So some focus on the food sector, construction, e-waste. Um, there's different strategies within these uh, uh, cities. 
Some look at circular procurement, so some focus on repair shops, others look, use digitalization as a tool to improve circularity. And so in terms of what cities need, uh, a lot of them mention that they need support with identifying circular business models, but there's also others that question uh, or that have questions around how material flow analysis could be applied within the city um, and what quantitative methods they could apply to understand circularity better. So we will continue with this uh, in the next uh, six months or so, supplementing the analysis with more cities and discussing what works within the partnership. But we're also interested to speak with more people, of course. Um, before I hand over back to Christina, I would like to say so within SCI, so this is one of our newest projects on circularity uh, and on cities, but we have a series of other projects that I've listed here and once the presentation is shared, you will be able to click on all of them. So um, they're linked to the SCI website. So we have projects that look at specific sectors. So um, uh, bonus. Um, uh, Revamp, for example, looks at uh, organic waste streams and urban circle. There's uh, the Baltic circular textile system, which is a project by SCI Tallinn. Um, but so there's then also some that look more at uh, strategies like Remi looked at the sharing economy um, and so on. So um, I will leave it there and hand over back to Christina. Thank you, Fedra. Uh, so currently there are no questions in our chat box, but um, before we go to Ian Mertens, I would like to ask you, uh, you mentioned in your presentation that, uh, so we see, well, we see one of the global mega trends is that people are moving more to cities. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, currently we have uh, this uh, COVID crisis Mm -hmm. And it has been also told that it is uh, actually um, a sickness or illness of big cities where it's very dense population. So mm -hmm. how do you think, could this actually affect how people or where are people going to live in the future? Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely going to be a lot of challenges for urban planners over the coming years just to understand um, if there's with this global pandemic, but there might be others we, we don't know. So how it would affect uh, living within a city and how people move around. And so um, I think one of the strategies that I really like is uh, from the city of Paris, where Mayor Hildago has said she wants to do the city of 15 minutes, where within a radius of 15 minutes cycling, you have everything within your needs. So you have your schools, your hospitals, your uh, supermarkets, your work, your parks and so on. And so I think that is a really interesting strategy. Um, and so I think that might be one that we will see more in a lot of cities. I see that there's uh, investments going on in improving cycling uh, opportunities in a lot of cities, which I think is great. Um, but yeah, so I would say um, people moving to the countryside, it might be initial reaction to do so, but then once you, once if there is no access or insufficient access to the services that you need, like jobs, hospitals, schools, parks, and so on, I don't think that will be a trend that sets, that continues for a long term. So there will need to be solutions that work for people. And so whether that is, I don't know, making smaller city centers or, you know, making it more, having the village within the city, for example, um, that might be things that I come up. And so um, going forward, I think for cities, it will be important that they improve their resilience and uh, rethink um, urban planning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think we can move now to our next presentation uh, to Jan Mertens. We have you on the line. Hi, I hope you can see me. Yes, we can see you and hear you perfectly well. OK, I'll, I'll see if I can bring um, the presentation. Do you see it? Yes. OK, I'll make it larger. So, I'll just start. Um, I shall introduce myself. I am Jan Mertes. I am the coordinator of the, the multi-stakeholder platform 
of the city of Leuven, who is uh, trying to guide our first urban circle strategy. First, let me introduce Leuven. Leuven is a relatively small city in the center of Belgium, close to Brussels. We have about uh, 100,000 inhabitants uh, and 50,000 students. Um, here you see some images of Leuven. Leuven is uh, uh, an historical I'm city. I'm sorry. Really yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but we cannot see when you switch the slides at this moment. Oops. What should I do? Is this better? Yeah. No? I think Yes, now we see. Maybe okay, we can I'll, le I'll leave it in this mode. Thank you. Uh, better. Okay. So, did you see this one? No. So, we are a city at the, the center of Belgium, 100,000, some images of the city. A city with, a, let's say, a, well, in this very historical center, but the city really in, in a transition in recent years. Uh, because of a, let's say, quick, uh, it is, it is, it is uh, quickly growing, growing very fast. In recent years, we had uh, some years that more than 1,000 people a year came to Leuven to, to live there. So, our strategy, how did we start? Um, we have a new local government, uh, which is made up of three parties. And in the re after recent elections, the, the, the Green Party entered in the local government. And um, well, in, in, in the six year program of this local government, we included uh, a very big chapter on circular cities. It, it was the first time that it was so explicitly mentioned in the city program. Uh, one of the important things uh, for us was start from what is already there. What is typical for Leuven, we have already quite an active, um, let's say, citizen engagement concerning circularity. You see some images of uh, where the, the, some years tradition of repair cafes, as we call it. You see the the, foot, the picture at the bottom where people can go and, and let uh, things repaired. You have, for instance, you see the other pictures, um, the so-called Mark Bar which is a little shop in the center of the city where you can go to to lend materials, uh, all kinds of things. So we had already quite an active citizen layer working with circularity. And it's always, always good to start from what's already there. What we did was um, after, after the, the new local government started, um, we started with uh, building up a platform with uh, some local stakeholders next to the city. This is the university, uh, companies, um, a network, a repair network of the city. This was important. What is also important for our strategy is uh, it has to be a learning strategy. I think we are in, in the early phases of our strategy. Uh, other cities like, for instance, Amsterdam are much further already in, in their strategic approach. So our um, starting point was let, let's start to, um, to get things going and, and learn by doing. You know, what would be the ideal structure on level of governance we will see in the coming years. So uh, it, has to be, it has to be looked at like that. It's, it's therefore also a pragmatic, flexible approach. I didn't want to lose time with um, discussions, and some people really do love those discussions about governance structures. Uh, they will become important when, when we get bigger, and but for the time being, let's start and see what happens. Uh, what was for me also very important is that um, there has to be political accountability. Therefore, we wanted a formal strategy. Um, that means that, that that the local government has to be accountable um, and it, it, it doesn't have to, it should not be something of uh, only something of a network uh, that is not accountable so what do you need um, i think it was already said in, in the previous presentation what is common for all strategies of, of um, uh, circular city strategies is that you need some kind of strategic analysis of local streams of resources and 
I think mostly in most cities, the streams are, are comparable. It's about building materials, it's about food, it's about uh, e-waste. And in, in some sense, more detailed or not, you, you, have to, you have to have a look of what is the urban metabolism, what kind of resources come into the city and leave out of the city and, and that, can, that we can give a new value. What is also important, I think, for lots of cities, also for Leuven, is try to make use of all the opportunities on national and European level. Uh, currently, um, most of the funding we need for our programs comes from, from European Union funding. Um, there are some people working at the city level, paid by the city, but most of the money uh, comes from there. And so it's important, I think, for all cities interested in, in trying to have this kind of uh, strategy, uh, see what's happening at European level and try to get the money when, when there's a possibility. It's also important to build up a kind of a network with other cities. And this is something we are investing in quite actively. For instance, see a picture at the bottom of the already the second strategy of the city of Amsterdam. This is one of the cities we are in, in close contact with. So this is how it looks like. Uh, it's not very sexy if you see uh, the document, but um, we have a brochure with, a, let's say, a, a user-friendly visualization of our strategy, but mainly it's a document of, let's say, almost 20 pages. Um, it looks like that. The contents of the strategy, we start with a general framework, what is circular economy, and we refer to the donut. I suppose everyone knows the donut by Kate Rayworth. We start with a kind of analysis, what do we already have in Leuven? And this is, you can do it uh, very extensively, or, ba or more on a basic level, but it's also always good to look what does already exist in our city. And mostly you will be surprised that lots of things are already there. Then we try to describe what are the main challenges for a city like Leuven to make it into a circular city. And then let's say the central part of the strategy is uh, the six priority goals and 28 actions. Then we have a short part on means of implementation. It's short because we do not have lots of means of implementation. Uh, we will try to build it up in the coming years. Um, then concerning governance, I explained already, uh, we have a basic structure with the, um, the platform. And of course, we have uh, the, the strategy itself that has been adopted by the city council unanimously. Um, so this is important. Um, some things about communication, follow-up, timing. What is important for our strategy is I think it, we, we work in two steps. So our main issue was try to get the things going. At the end of 2021, we will make an update of the strategy. This means that by then, we hope to have more um, scientific information on, on the streams in the city. We hope to have more detailed uh, indicators and goals to, to have a more focused strategy afterwards. So it's, it's a two-step approach. Well, the first priority is uh, circular entrepreneurship. What can that mean? There are some projects uh, in Leuven where we will try to have circular business parks, which means link, linking the, the streams that are now waste streams, try to give them new value. There will be um, a, big, a big business building in, let's say, the more industrial part of the city that will get will have a new, new, uh, new purpose that will be built based on circular uh, principles. There are already some some local startups. Uh, you see a picture at the bottom of um, a startup working with uh, natural materials. Um, you see an image of a local, sh a lo let's say, a workplace um, where it was started by some young people who who try to give, um, let's say, new use to uh, old materials that were waste until then. I hope, and this is something that was mentioned in the previous uh, presentation, that, that this will help us to give, uh, to provide for more sustainable jobs for fernal people, maybe uh, that, that will lose their jobs uh, due to digitalization and, 
in those kinds of things. It is important for a city like Leuven that we can invest in the economy of the future. Um, and the Leuven University is also the center of the materials research in Flanders and the, the big specialists are here in Leuven and it is very important for us to have some uh, partnerships with the university. The second priority is circular construction. What does that, does that mean? Um, I hope we can change the, the way we build uh, currently into um, something completely different. Uh, you can look at the city as, as a library of resources and this, this change of perspective change all, uh, does also change how you look at the city. If we build our buildings in a way that they can be adapted, that all the materials are that are in it, like uh, let's say like Lego can be used again, this, this changes uh, the culture. Um, we are looking for new opportunities for resource streams and there are already some projects in preparation also with European money. Um, one of the in interesting resource streams is wood and uh, we will start in the coming months with a materials bank as it's called and you see the two people there at the right. Um, what they are, they are looking for, for new things out of old wood and at the bottom you see a picture of uh, Jürgen Meurs, who is enormously popular in Flanders. He's a, a famous television cook and he works from Leuven. And what we are doing, you see the little, the, the wood thing he's holding in his hands, it's to cut your vegetables. This is one of the, of the city products that we will make available in the coming months. It's made of old wood uh, collected from an old building. So this is the second priority. The third has to do with everything with repairing, sharing and reusing. Um, we already have an active repair ecosystem and it, it will be complemented uh, also by a European project called Share Repair. And, and with Share Repair, we will try to have, let's say, a digital um, basis for this, uh, this uh, repair ecosystem. Um, you see the picture of Maakbaar, which is a, a local platform network of all kinds of citizen and more professional initiatives. Uh, you see at the, the bottom at the right, we already have a, a map of Leuven with indicated all kinds of initiatives you can go to. In the center at the bottom, you see a new website. Um, you can put your question on the website. I need someone who can repair my whatever. And you can find uh, those people by, those, uh, by this website. The fourth has to do with consumption. And the focus there will mainly be circular fashion. Uh, you see some examples of, uh, we already have some, some um, shops in Leuven working with um, fair fashion, circular fashion. You see, for instance, at the bottom, a picture of a shop where I bought my circular jeans. Uh, I hope that we have something, what you see on the right hand side is already happening in Ghent, that we can have things like fair fashion or circular fashion uh, festivals. The fifth has to do with more developing knowledge. Um, it has, that's the first thing. So we will, we will, I hope we have a meeting next Monday. I hope we come to an agreement uh, for a scientific package, package to give the basis of our strategy. This has mainly to do with um, data collection. Uh, as was already mentioned, there are several um, uh, frameworks for indicators, but our experience also by the people from the university is that, that we also need better data collection to feed into uh, the monitoring framework. So uh, what we hope is that we have a functioning or a good enough functioning monitoring framework by the end of uh, next year. Um, we also try to change the practice we have of, uh, of our policies, for instance, procurement. This is um, does not does not seem to be very sexy, but it is very, very uh, strategically important. Um, as a city, the things you buy, when you can change the way you buy things, um, it, it can be very, very important. Um, all the kinds of procedures, for instance, 
when you want a policy of urban mining, you have to change the procedures that are uh, existent for demolishing buildings. What we hear from, hear from people uh, trying to recuperate uh, all kinds of things that are, can be used is we do not have time enough to go into the building and make an analysis because it is demolished very, very quickly. And if you change these procedures at the city level, you, you give a uh, stimulus to uh, urban mining. The sixth is, uh, has, it has to do with policy coherence. Uh, what Leuven is concerned, for instance, uh, food is not in our circular strategy because we already have a local food strategy. You see the picture there. And it's important for us to have, let's say, at a horizontal level, check whether the other strategies are also coherent with what we are doing in our circular strategy. For instance, in the next weeks at the City Council, we have um, the presentation of our new climate action plan. Uh, we checked that uh, the circular principles are in this action plan. So, um, what we did also in, with our strategy, we made up a timing. You see it on the left side. Uh, we need to start with this action in this year. And at the right side, you see I, I make this kind of schemes every um, four times a year, four times a year. We have four times a year, we have a platform meeting. And then I prepare this kind of um, um, uh, Excel scheme uh, with explaining what have we done uh, in, in the last months. Uh, this is it, I think. If we can go back. Thank you very much. Am I within time? Yes, I am. Yes, of course, uh, you are. OK, I have one question. What is the opportunity for circularity in smaller cities? Let's say around uh, 30,000 people. Well, I, I think it, it will not be that different. Um, you have to start with analysis. What do you already have? In our case, um, the university is something very important. If you are not a university city, it will be different. But everything happening with um, repairing, I think it will be popular in all cities. I, I think in all cities you have citizens trying to um, start with repair workshops, and this can be an interesting starting point. Um, trying to change um, that's another example. Uh, your procurement rules can be interesting, but then you have to work together with other cities because it, 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 to start with, it is all sometimes difficult for um, uh, public servants working in, in local government. If, if you have a very small service, you need information from, from others. And I think food is also very popular and we all need food. And, uh, one of the effects of the current corona crisis is that people have become more aware of the importance of local sustainable food. So this can be a very interesting starting point to think about circularity. And construction, of course, um, the, the principle is, is quite easy. Uh, implementation might be more difficult, but um, trying to make use of what will come to us through the European Green Deal can also be uh, an interesting starting point because uh, um, the Green Deal will be central in the European Recovery Program and there will be lots of uh, uh, attention to circularity and renovation of buildings. And when you combine those two, that will give uh, lots of opportunities and also money possibly for several cities to try to think about um, new innovative uh, projects. And we have another question. Are sustainable building certifications doing enough to promote circularity? Oops. Um, I am not really a technical expert on this issue. I, I know the discussion, uh, but I, I, I don't think I can answer it in, in um, I suppose not, but uh, 
uh, I should just direct this question to someone else who has really the technical capacity to answer. Okay, then we can take another question. Uh, could you describe the process you have undertaken for engaging with residents, businesses, other stakeholder when creating the circular economy strategy? Um, you were involved those various. Yes, groups. it depends a little bit. Uh, it's it's quite easy uh, to engage citizens. Uh, we have already a tradition in Leuven of citizen engagement. We already have been working some years with a large platform on a project to make Leuven a climate neutral city. So this is already there. It has been uh, built up uh, for years now with all local stakeholders. Circularity is something else. Um, it is was quite easy with citizens. I must admit, for the moment, it is more difficult with uh, companies. Um, I don't know why. In some other cities in Flanders and Belgium, it seems to be easier to uh, involve local companies into your um, strategy. What we are trying to do for, for this group is um, we are preparing some, some more um, information activities in, in the coming months, try to explain them what might be interesting for your company and one of the things we are uh, hoping to to work out in the coming years is a kind of um, i don't know which form it will have a, an institution or a sort of company that can really help uh, small companies uh, within their company to um, look for opportunities this kind of material in your company can be useful to, to think of um, some kind of circular strategy and that we really can help them on the spot. This is one of the dreams we have. Um, concerning construction, I think that that, that will be easier. Uh, one of my dreams is that we can have uh, at the end of this year of next year, when, when it's again possible, uh, a big conference uh, at this local level with, for instance, uh, people from, from the European Union, with all the large construction federations and and explain to all the people why it's so interesting to think of circular projects. So it, it depends a bit from group to group, I think. Thank you very much. Um, also to those listeners who joined us a little bit later, uh, please do write your uh, questions into the chat box and then we can come back to them later. So, uh, thank you, Jan Mertens. We are now moving on to our next presenter. Uh, we, have, uh, we have Ralph Martin Soa from Taltec. Yes, uh, hello. Very happy to be here. Great, we hear you well. And I think you can take over now the presentation. Yes, so I will... Um... Uh, show my uh, slides as well. So um, um, I will put it in the presenter mode. Uh, and if I choose, if I change the slides, can you see them? Yes. Okay. Works well. It works sometimes, doesn't. So I just wanted to make sure. Uh, yes. So I'm uh, uh, Ralph Martin Soa from. Uh, Finest Twin Smart City Center of Excellence. Uh, it's a new uh, 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 European Commission and the Estonian government uh, initiated uh, uh, Center of Excellence uh, focusing on, on smart cities. Uh, so if, uh, if you heard from uh, the previous uh, uh, present presentation that, uh, that Leuven, uh, City of Leuven has a lot of development projects uh, funded by the European Commission, uh, so this is very similar uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to cities in Estonia and also in Finland that we are collaborating with. Uh, and, uh, and we ourselves, uh, this uh, Centre of Excellence has received uh, 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 significant funding from uh, European Commission and the Estonian government. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so um, uh, I will briefly give an introduction uh, to uh, uh, what we are doing uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and what is the initiative about. We are uh, uh, 
uh, uh, cross country and cross city and cross university um, uh, uh, new center of excellence, meaning that uh, we have been founded by uh, by uh, 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 Tallinn University of Technology and Ministry of uh, uh, Economic Affairs and Communications from Estonia side uh, jointly with, uh, with Aalto University from Finland uh, and, uh, and Forum Virum Helsinki innovation company owned by city of Helsinki uh, also in Finland. Uh, so we have uh, uh, four founders uh, with whom uh, we are targeting uh, the joint goals uh, and we were openly um, uh, initiated uh, as a center of excellence uh, last December. So we are like uh, like academic uh, or research and innovation uh, uh, startup, so to say, uh, that has received uh, uh, over 30 million euros as a as a as an initiation grant. Uh, so we are in a very fast <clears throat> pace of of getting the. Uh, the team structures and our activities uh, kicked off, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, the most interesting part uh, I want to introduce you is our uh, our large-scale uh, piloting program. So this is why the presentation is called as well um, co-creating smart cities uh, via experiments. Uh, Uh, yes, so we are working on um, uh, in in five streams, uh, so ranging from uh, smart city governance to mobility to built environment to energy to urban analytics and data, and obviously uh, all kind of uh, environmental questions are horizontal to uh, to to most streams we are working uh, with and uh, and. Uh, and uh, from a European Commission perspective, uh, uh, and also from Estonian government's perspective, we are expected uh, to contribute to uh, to the climate goals as well. So, uh, so this is uh, this is something which is very important to us, and uh, and uh, and also um, uh, uh, will be in the in the evaluation metrics uh, when we are selecting our, our pilots. Uh, 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 so we are. Uh, 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 on our hand, uh, from early on, uh, we have promised and, and, and we want to contribute to digital single market, so making uh, services uh, cross-border uh, between the cities. Uh, and, uh, and, and that means that if we run our pilots, we do it um, uh, with several cities at the same time, uh, if ever possible. Um, and yes, so our goal is that, uh, that even though we are funded as a project uh, or uh, even two projects for the next seven, eight years, uh, we need to show that uh, that uh, that we will be financially sustainable in the long run. In the longer run, and that means that we are developing those capabilities, uh, uh, um, how to initiate uh, more research and innovation activities, and this is progressing uh, surprisingly well. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, on one hand, uh, as, uh, as a research center, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, very keen and, uh, and interested in all kind of smart city research that, uh, that, uh, that also is related to new project that is financing this research. Uh, so we have promised to deliver uh, uh, research publications uh, on the ideas uh, for several pilots and then Later, based on the empirical evidence as well, results of, of those those uh, those, uh, uh, those activities, and then uh, as said that, uh, that we need to show our financial sustainability through uh, through um, uh, access to to competitive funding. Uh, uh, this is like this for Horizon 2020, for example, or Horizon Europe. Uh, and and then uh, we also are engaged in a smaller scale with, uh, with PhD education. And on the innovation side, maybe more interest uh, for for broader community uh, that uh, that we really aim to to contribute to to uh, to offering joint uh, smart city services for cross-border citizens. Uh, and uh, and uh, and we will deliver uh, ten large-scale pilots. Uh, 
um, uh, where we involve uh, also researchers, companies, uh, and uh, and uh, and and want to contribute to uh, like the broader um, Internet of Things or urban platform uh, um, uh, of how to exchange data between different uh, coming from different uh, devices and uh, and departments within the cities as well. Um, yeah, so the idea is uh, is to uh, deliver those uh, street level uh, pilots. Uh, 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 and uh, I'm sorry if I have some background noise. Uh, um, uh, and uh, and uh, already now uh, there is uh, quite good progress uh, in Estonia regarding the like, robot vehicles, pilots, uh, 5G pilots, and also uh, several um, uh, uh, zero energy or even positive energy buildings. Uh, so we have quite good proof of cases, uh, and we we have several agreements with uh, international players. Uh, but uh, that are not up, updated at the moment, but uh, but uh, but we have been negotiating with, uh, with several companies on <clears throat> on on how to trigger um, uh, smart city large scale pilots jointly with uh, with uh, private sector as well, uh, and so. Um, uh, uh, this is how we function, but uh, but we have. Uh, um, uh, that we have uh, uh, five streams, uh, and we have uh, um, and we have um, we are de developing this urban uh, platform, and uh, and uh, and we are uh, uh, initiating uh, then uh, uh, large scale uh, pilots. Uh, so the logic uh, there is that uh, the center of excellence is, is one uh, initiative, and everything comes together later. But uh, but uh, but uh, in, in activity-wise, uh, streams are more research-based. Uh, so a lot of uh, uh, researchers from uh, from Aalto University and Ta Tallinn University of Technology are are doing the basic research uh, in within those research streams. An urban platform is something which is a technical development of uh, of uh, of actual integration of uh, databases, and uh, and then uh, we are initiating a large scale pilot jointly with cities, um, uh, uh, which is more like uh, applied or implementation activity. Uh, uh, this is the core of uh, of, of our activities, uh, and and what we. Uh, what we mean by pilot is that, uh, that it's a research-based solution to an urban challenge in five fields, uh, 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 starting from mobility, energy, built environment, governance, and data, as you saw um, in the stream description as well. And when we have uh, Estonian cities as uh, test beds for pilots, uh, but at the same time, uh, um, uh, we uh, Clearly, um, uh, are interested in in the cross-border aspects of uh, of, uh, uh, of of uh, of our solutions. Uh, so we are open and interested in in selecting uh, uh, non-Estonian cities uh, firstly from Finland, but then later from uh, from Europe and and then beyond as well to be part of of these activities. Uh, and uh, and currently we are working uh, with uh, with. Uh, with several partners uh, towards initiating a similar uh, uh, piloting program, also like in in Africa for African cities. Uh, uh, so, uh, so just be one example uh, what uh, what we are currently working uh, working on under the lead of uh, UN Habitant um, and their Smart City Unit. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, as a, like the timeline and budget wise. Uh, 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 our pilots in the smart city are uh, very uh, substantial. Uh, so uh, one pilot is expected to be approximately 1.5 million euros, uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and we will deliver at least 10 pilots uh, in the next uh, seven, seven, eight years. Uh, uh, and uh, um, this part of activity is funded by Estonian government, uh, so that means that, uh, that there is interest, obviously, to involve Estonian cities into this as well, and uh, and and we can um, 
finance uh, activities uh, and tasks uh, of uh, of cities in Estonia as part of of this uh, this activities. So a little bit uh, as well uh, how we are selecting uh, uh, those uh, those large scale pilots. Uh, so it is really so challenge driven approach. Uh, um, uh, we're already uh, in June. Uh, we are starting uh, questionnaireing uh, the cities, uh, and later we will have uh, more in-depth interviews uh, and, uh, and joint uh, workshops as well. If cities uh, to list those main challenges what they are facing uh, in terms of uh, of, uh, of of future um, goals and in terms of of uh, of, of of, uh, of of their actual um, uh, development plans as well, and then as a second step, we are opening a call uh, for the pilot ideas. Uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, open call. We are interested in having the best ideas uh, for the best pilots uh, uh, to be implemented. Uh, and then in the third phase, and this comes in the fall session, and the outcome is that, uh, that, uh, that uh, we will have a priority list of, of, of ideas. Uh, and, and then the third part is uh, the hardest part that, uh, that uh, we start uh, actually implementing those, uh, those piloting ideas uh, in cities. Uh, and this uh, continues uh, the, throughout the next uh, seven, eight years. Uh, Starting from from next year, and and also based on the challenges, based on the ideas that we get, uh, we might start with, uh, with, uh, with one pilot starting from next year, but we can also start with five pilots if we get uh, like uh, very strong ideas and uh, and that also are realistic enough to be implemented. Uh, and then the fourth section is is when scaling up the solutions that uh, that really like uh, to uh, to work with cities and uh, and 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 to 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 come up with uh, new smart city solutions. Uh, uh, so a little bit uh, more about those steps as well. That uh, that uh, mapping urban challenges, as I mentioned, that we are doing the, um, uh, uh, the questionnaire interviews and workshops as well, and this process is just uh, just started. Uh, uh, so our main interest is that what are the main urban challenges what the cities are facing in the next five to ten years. Uh, we're not that much interested in knowing what are the urban challenges today, uh, uh, because uh, we really want to target our uh, approach more to future and be more research based in that sense. Uh, but uh, but, uh, but, uh, but if cities are saying that, uh, that they have uh, pipes that are leaking or that, uh, that some cities want to build a bridge or so on, that they have like, specific development needs. And, and this is something uh, uh, we, uh, we are also interested, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but this is not our key focus point, but our key focus point is still to, to introduce new technologies to cities uh, facing uh, actual urban challenges, what they are having. Uh, so jointly with cities, uh, we will come to the consensus, what are those 10 top uh, challenges uh, as input to our, our next stage, uh, uh, which is the, the call for violence. Uh, uh, um, so uh, the call for pilots is, is really uh, 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 follows uh, the logic that uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, we uh, are firstly stream based, uh, so uh, we are interested in in getting the input uh, to ideas mainly in uh, streams we are working in, and then uh, uh, we are selecting uh, the ideas uh, by the evaluation committee or jury, and we are giving some some prizes to the best ideas as well. And uh, and uh, and uh, and from our approach is to to have this call as open as possible. Uh, and so we are selecting, uh, uh, or our selection criteria is still in the development process, uh, and it is related to the urban challenges faced as well. Uh, but uh, but the main logic there is that uh, that we want to see research excellence, uh, we want to see innovation potential growth potential, but also a very important part is feasibility, but is this uh, pilot activity actually, actually feasible? 
Uh, and, and this is very, very critical because all of us have several demands and ideas uh, what could, could be done, but, uh, but can we actually put in practice is another thing. And then, importantly, uh, impact on urban environment uh, and also contributing to, to um, uh, UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals and, uh, and European Commission Climate Goals as well, and, imp and, and, and seeing actual impact uh, to in inhabitants. Uh, 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 so, uh, I won't go too much into detail how we are evaluating this, but, uh, but it just covers that, uh, that logic that, uh, that, uh, that we have evaluation method and, uh, and members of the jury, and, uh, and, and then uh, it's based on consensus that, uh, that we re need to reach consensus, which piloting ideas are the most promising ones. Uh, and then uh, the third step, uh, starting from next year is, is when uh, getting those, uh, those pilots actually kicked off uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a city environments. Uh, and, uh, and, and for that, uh, we will have a piloting plan uh, with, uh, with the tasks and budget uh, for each, uh, each pilot. Uh, and, uh, and as mentioned, that we need to involve at least one city uh, to that as well. And, and then uh, as a, as a uh, follow-up uh, step, uh, we want to see replication as well uh, to our cities globally, and, and we are opening up our blog as well, well like research and innovation blog, uh, where we give uh, progress updates on the piloting uh, status and, and even the piloting plans as well. Uh, so this is our timetable. Um, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we are currently mapping those urban challenges uh, jointly with cities or starting the process, uh, developing the questionnaire and, and then spreading it uh, to the cities and then having interviews with them and, and consensus uh, meetings as well. <coughs> Sorry. And then we're opening this open, open call and, uh, and, and go to the pilot, piloting phase um, starting from uh, next year. And, uh, and we still, as said, uh, we are a new um, initiative uh, started only six months ago. So in a way, as a uh, structure, as a uh, center of excellence, uh, uh, we have been initiated from scratch. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and we started uh, pretty much at the same time when the COVID-19 virus started to spread. So we we uh, we hope that uh, that when the world had uh, one very big uh, uh, negative challenge uh, to be faced, uh, when there were several positive ones as well, including our our uh, uh, center of excellence uh, uh, that was kicked off uh, December, and that means that uh, that we are still working on the evaluation criteria uh, when talking about pilots. Uh, and uh, and uh, and still working on the measurement of the impact of, uh, of pilots and also like the climate part here is very important that, uh, that um, or environmental point that, uh, that, uh, that how to measure the, the impact of our pilots uh, that are uh, research based uh, uh, it's, it's 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 quite a tricky challenge uh, so I would uh, uh, conclude uh, this brief um, intro introduction uh, here now. What I didn't do uh, here is I didn't go too much into depth into our uh, research activities uh, and urban platform development as well, uh, uh, as I uh, assumed that, uh, that the broader audience uh, might be more interested in, in this piloting program. Uh, but if you're interested, I can uh, give some introduction to, uh, to uh, our strategic research and innovation agenda and, uh, and the urban platform development as well, which maybe are more like uh, center of excellence specific. So uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, and uh, maybe we can have like a quick discussion on this as well. Thank you. Uh, mm a question from Fedra, just to confirm. Uh, to the cities who are part of the pilot, do they have to be from Estonia or Finland? Or w when will you, will you start to including also cities from other European countries? So we are, um, so we're like 
two approaches. But first of all, we are uh, very much interested in working with, uh, with uh, all European cities. Uh, that's our key priority. And we already now have uh, several cooperation projects uh, with, uh, with, uh, with other cities uh, in Europe as well. So like, uh, approximately five to ten cities are involved. Uh, and we are also uh, actively participating in, in, in initiating joint projects with, uh, with, uh, with all cities in Europe because we are a European uh, smart city center of excellence. The limitation we have um, regarding the large scale pilots is that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Estonian government uh, wants to see uh, each city, uh, but in each pilot, one Estonian city involved. Uh, so this is a strong limitation. And, uh, and but on our hand, uh, we are uh, able to provide financial support as well to those cities. Um, in terms of uh, other cities, uh, uh, we have said uh, and, and agreed with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Estonian government that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that we can do cross-border uh, checks and cross-border pilots with uh, external cities from Estonia as well and involve them and do piloting activities outside from, uh, from Estonian cities, which is something we really want to do. But uh, we cannot finance the cities directly, so we can finance the activities we are doing there, for example, if we outsource some companies uh, doing some pilots in, in other cities, uh, but we cannot uh, involve them into the project due to the financial restrictions. On the other hand, uh, as said, that, uh, that we are continuously developing several uh, uh, joint proposals with, uh, with cities uh, around uh, Europe. So I think we have had proposals with most cities, uh, or I have had. So the Center of Excellence, uh, um, uh, most bigger cities, we have we have been involved, uh, or we have been involved with, uh, with designing joint proposals. And the second part is that uh, important to mention as well that City of Helsinki. Through its uh, its innovation company, uh, Forum Virum Helsinki is one of our initiators and core uh, founders uh, and at the same time uh, they are initiating uh, mini pilots as well which are open and uh, and uh, and and do not need to be restricted uh, but the mini pilots are significantly smaller uh, uh, in in their uh, initiative so like yeah our test bed main test bed is is Estonian cities okay Thank you. And if ever anyone is interested in some additional information, can they then contact you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, will you also stay with us at the discussion at the end? Yes, I will stay. Okay. In. Yeah. Perfect. There are uh, a few, some other questions. Thank you for now. Uh, and let's move to our next presentation by uh, Sila Pichlak from Estonian Academy of Arts. Hello, everybody. You can see me, right? Yes, we can see and hear you very well. Perfect. Um, I will test the sharing as uh, well. OK. Mm -hmm. And it's all there, right? Yes, works. OK. So. I'm very glad to be in this uh, lineage of uh, super interesting presentations. As uh, as Ralph uh, Martin was showing, um, a larger scale, I would be definitely now scaling down into the scale of um, buildings and installations. Uh, so, and as Jan said pr previously, I would be dealing with, uh, oh, I would categorize myself really like this hands-on uh, doing, uh, learning by doing, a method. So basically constructing the um, uh, different uh, demonstrators and then um, so t prototyping those demonstrators and then protocoling them. Like what did we learn and what we need to change in order to truly jump the scale. But uh, this is a sort of uh, a sequence of my five-year um, practice in uh, part that I co-founded with Sim uh, Tuxum. Um, and, and these are some of the projects uh, that uh, we have investigated. They're all in different scales. Uh, um, some are constructed, some are still in the process. But to be honest, only a few of them are uh, or will be constructed out of wood. 
So I guess I would be discussing today also this kind of failure projects um, or um, the projects that have maybe less of success in terms of uh, what how they're done, but maybe more and more knowledge to learn from them. So and yeah, and let's keep in mind the, the question I raised in, in the beginning that um, uh, that the, these process, what are those processes that should be sustainable uh, uh, in in architecture? And maybe we can answer it in the, in the end of this presentation. So to quickly introduce um, this uh, topic that I see in uh, contemporary architecture um, is the idea of. Uh, uh, the fact that for the longest time, the design methodology for digital architecture have been from sketch towards the parts. So if I borrow um, a design uh, or a sketch from um, uh, Theo van Dosburg, um, the di diagram shows the lineage of abstraction uh, of a Russian dance, even though it's um, uh, it's not really what's happening in contemporary architecture. This kind of um, thinking or abstracting towards parts is uh, maybe more in uh, still constructing the hand sketches. So if one would search for a, a contemporary architecture, you would see maybe more of inhabitable sculptures uh, and napkin sketches, or I would even uh, say um, that uh, the crumbled uh, papers that turn into concert halls and culture cathedrals. Um, and there's much less an of idea what kind of materiality it is and what are those parts that it consists of. So I'm um, in our office, we're questioning like, what if uh, it's time uh, to stop crumbling the paper and start crumbling the polygons instead? And those polygons are uh, then related um, to the, the construction technological possibilities that, that are material, material driven and they have certain design parameters that could be embedded already in the beginning of the processes. So in a way, um, we would also could say that let's turn this uh, bottom up method. Let, let's start defining the, the element or the panel or the, the building block and then scale up from there. And what kind of um, uh, structures would be coming from this? So this is bottom up and top down methods I would be now discussing in, in the lineage of my work. Uh, but also the, the second really important uh, idea in this uh, research is the materiality. And it seems to me that this uh, ongoing greenwashing in uh, in architecture has uh, is is dealing a lot with uh, translating, translating the the concrete precast panels into timber um, um, preassembled panels, and and that's uh, something that uh, I think I think that's a wrong direction to go, um, because. What has changed in those 50 years um, of construction is also the, the need for different kind of spaces and different kind of architecture. And the most, if we are reintroducing timber into an urban scale or into architecture, I'm saying reintroducing because for at Soviet times, it was not um, really allowed material to be uh, taken as a, as a serious construction material. Uh, so it's literally meant to be reintroducing it. Then um, I'm happily not alone in this uh, process. So there, there's a young emerging group of architects who are actually tackling this um, problem. What does a material want? What are those capabilities of um, CLT, plywood, timber? Um, and what kind of new components of architecture could be resulting from there? And those components here are nothing to do with, um, with the previously seen panels. But and then one could, of course, um, but it's but are dealing with uh, with reinterpreting the the ceiling, re 
uh, designing the idea of the or changing the idea of the apertures, the openings, and changing the idea of how we how we move in the space. But of course, these are installations. If you're critical, I, I understand that now, and they have little to do with um, with large scale cons construction. So that's why I would uh, quickly tr try to or like to show also the um, the scale jump that uh, we are now uh, dealing with. So this is uh, one of the latest works uh, that we have proposed as um, an as a result of this methodology that we're applying in our design, uh, a four-story apartment building. But we will get into that in, uh, in detail for a second. So this the development of methodology and how it has been emerging. The early lineage that I believed for some time in my career was that uh, if the architect um, has this uh, design uh, sort of completed or understood what it should look like, it's being then handed over to the engineer who makes it stand and then to the manufacturer who uh, makes it physical. When tracking my own workflows, I realized that there's a lot of design protocols embedded that are already possible in the early stage of a design. And there's also this kind of prototypical understandings coming out of those workflows. But the central um, position here is this uh, common platform. The common platform where um, the manufacturers and engineers are as important as a designer and can insert their own knowledge and information about the, the material, the technology available, and, uh, and other structural limitations, for example. Again, once being critical, you could ask like, hey, so if you're going to have a common platform with a lot of uh, designers involved, let's say like uh, almost a design by committee, you could um, result with uh, with the aim of designing a horse, but resulting with a um, camel. I would like to try to prove an otherwise. In this common platform, for example, uh, this is an um, electricity pylon, 43 uh, meters high, uh, designed for Estonia, that um, in uh, at the moment under construction. That's the, the parametric um, common platform that we're using where an engineer can insert their information that these are these uh, red and uh, green lines at the moment the pulling and pushing of the pylon and uh, and also constantly it's, it's running the material uh, information like how much uh, mater uh, mater materiality is necessary for this so we are keeping the geometry constantly alive but the geometry is framed by the parameters, the design parameters that we are inserting, uh, and and then having the the uh, the form or the body of it as uh, as we actually intended, but running through ten thousand different possibilities, uh, working with live material and I do call timber live material um, that are that the properties are constantly in a flux. These, for example, is an installation that we constructed in two thousand fifteen where few days before the, the construction you can get you get the phone call before getting the elements to CNC and these are not just few elements these are 374 unique elements um, that uh, that the material the lumber is actually much smaller than uh, discussed before than a uh, few millimeters but few millimeters in the timber joint uh, means a lot so we needed to adapt the whole geometry super fast uh, to new CNC files that happily was possible and uh, uh, due to the idea of, uh, of parametric common platform. So if I would say that um, that this is, uh, we are not getting a horse out of it, uh, uh, we are neither getting the camel out of it, but we are actually uh, ending with a unicorn. Uh, and the unicorn is much more fitter to its original design, the design uh, that the architect had in mind, but this design is now not anymore um, a sculpture or a fixed uh, units, 
but it is um, uh, protocols or uh, a framing regulations uh, of the design. Um, so there's been three stages before we reach what we reach. The peace box structures were the um, elements where we started uh, defining the overall gesture. And I'm again uh, borrowing Dosberg, but um, I'm now expanding this diagram uh, where there is an overall gesture and and then we result with the detail. Um, these were the scalp, uh, demonstrators in urban scale uh, of, uh, of the bodybuilding installation uh, and, and also working with students for various installations where actually for students introducing this fluid hammer, as I call it, because uh, it's, it is doing what it's, what's necessary, but it's still remaining flexible and adaptable. Uh, the students could then design this uh, red um, geometry, and then uh, by applying this, this new tool, we, we result with, uh, with the structure of it. And there's been a lot of, of this kind of installations. But installation is one scale, now jumping to infrastructure scale. And as I said, there's going to be some failure projects. Then, uh, then this was definitely a pilot that we won in 2016 that uh, immediately after that was asked to, and we designed it out of timber, right? Uh, it was asked to consider reconsider this in, in other materials without changing the geometry of it. Uh, so we tried to argue with CO2 emissions and we tried to argue with um, with lower um, costs uh, that really didn't work out. Uh, so something that uh, was uh, the, the, the initial geometry logic came from uh, Clulam uh, uh, timber um, uh, construction methods resulted uh, with those pictures from, from Romania at the moment, where uh, where they're actually mimicking the um, um, those uh, chamfers and fillets of uh, those uh, mega components uh, with uh, with actually uh, decorative uh, methods. Also, with uh, tackling the urban scale and uh, and considering uh, bringing back the. Uh, the roof chips that we traditionally used uh, to cover uh, uh, roof and said like, hey, what if in uh, in a tunnels, pedestrian tunnels, we could bring back those this relatable scale, um, and with the variable colors as the ones that are ex more exposed to the UV. Um, that means on the south facing elements would of course lose their color quite fast. So we said like maybe it is already gray outside and then uh, being translated into the warmer uh, honey colors in the interior of the tunnel. But of course that was also then due to the fire regulations that are not yet uh, really adapting to the sustainable needs uh, translated into bricks and those um, bricks are something that is now again under construction in Tartu, the second biggest city of um, Tallinn, uh, of Estonia. Uh, so basically what you can see that the Peace Box system definitely had uh, this experimental and fo formal values. Um, but there was also a lot of uh, complexity involved and those labor intensive uh, finding, the finding the elements and combining them resulted with understanding that if we want to jump a scale with uh, timber construction, we really need to start changing the understanding between uh, the elements we use. So it resulted with the aggregated structures and then these are much more dealing with uh, defining that element before the whole and then assembling out of those elements uh, by repeating them um, structures that uh, where the connection detail could be as in the size of a seat but also in the size of a small element and uh, sometimes we even produce our own connection details to to get installations uh, with um, with hand luggage to Venice Architecture Penale that we did in 2018. So the workflow also split it up. So we had a common platform actually designing the element uh, or the detail and then the overall. And that's something that you can also see in a T1 uh, shopping mall installation where it consists of three ports and type two ports. 
and has no vertical um, reaching up to 80 meters but without any vertical pillars so these were the shipyard workers who did that and um, this is the assembly process basically showing that uh, we needed um, really small elements to be able to do that inside of a 30 meter height shopping mall atrium so one could even say that the detail became more important uh, than the overall. But of course, once it, when you do those aggregated systems, uh, the, the biggest disadvantage is the idea that you start um, constructing space grids instead of those formal uh, gestures and geometries that was also an initial design idea. So we needed to find something um, Sorry, it's in Estonian. Somatic modularity is what we what I call it, and this somatic modularity is something that combines the both ends and brings back the variable scales, so the large scale building components to the small stair scale. So in a way, you look at the facade, uh, and if you need to scale or change the facade, these are all um, these understandings of um, of the window to the pillar are defined in those parameters and the other way around the stair is uh, something uh, that is uh, closely connected to the to the human relatable scale that what we also tried we did our first tries in in those um, in this installation in, in t1 consisting of various scales uh, components but they all have the same logic and same angularity of connecting uh, just to yeah, finalized, there's some uh, more projects that are dealing with and, and the workflow is uh, is expanding and the common platform is getting greater and greater. So the last project I would like to show is this uh, um, private house, uh, not private house, but apartment building that uh, has a sort of a spiraling gesture, meaning that it can create uh, a stepped flooring with uh, different uh, room heights. Uh, uh, this is a 40 square meter uh, Patchless pad in uh, in Tallinn, where uh, we are really tackling this idea of a stair being in the same system than uh, than the facade, and uh, instead of uh, then uh, buying the, the square meters, you are buying the the lineage of like how many meters you want to buy out of this building uh, because uh, the the in between walls are not anymore necessary as it's spiraling upwards. And we look at this in, in other scales as well. So the somatic modularity is uh, is helping us to, again, reintroduce the primitive geometries, translate what the pitched roof, for example, means. But it also, it's a perfect combination of this quasi-automated industries that we have in a timber, uh, uh, timber industries in Estonia, um, but also combining it with sustainable architecture. So. This is combining the bottom-up and uh, top-down uh, methods and, uh, and hopefully also resulting with uh, some uh, large-scale examples. So, if I get back to the beginning, if the Jeopardy question is, these processes must be sustainable in architecture, so what should be the answer? And I think it is in all those scales that we are tackling. It is from the design thinking to the dismantling of the element. And we need to, once we are calculating the, um, once we are calculating the energy efficiency of a building, we have to deal with the whole lifespan of the building, where the materials coming from, how they're transported, how they're manufactured, how they're put together, to the idea of the of the final resulting and like how we actually dismantle this building. So thank you very much. Um, sorry if I ran out of time, but I hope I didn't. Uh, thank you, Sila, very much. Um, we will maybe come back to you with one or two questions at the end uh, during the discussion time. Now we will move to our last presenter. Uh, Nikola Jakobi from ICLE. Yes, hi. Can you can you see me? Yes. Can, yes. I'll check uh, whether I can share my screen. I assume you can see my screen as well. Yes, we can see it. 
Okay. Um, well, yes, my name is um, Nikola Jakovi, and I work um, at uh, ICLE European Secretariat um, as a uh, project officer uh, dealing with um, uh, local uh, resource management, uh, climate topics, resilience. And um, well, thank you very much to SCI uh, Talon for, for the opportunity to, to present here. Um, we are going now um, a little bit back to a, a more ma a macro scale. Um, now, uh, from the previous presentation, it was dealing very much with the with the built infrastructure and built environment. Um, I hope this is fine uh, for you, and 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 I hope I don't have uh, too many uh, redundancies in my presentation of of things that were said before. But I but I hope it's it's going to be interesting for you. So um, just uh, two slides on 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 ICLE. Uh, for those who don't know, we are a, a global uh, network uh, of cities. Um, active in um, around the world, actually, on, on, on each of the uh, continents, with around 1,800 local authorities and regional authorities as, as members. Um, active, as I said, on each of the of the world's world's continents, with with bigger uh, secretariat offices, but also with country offices, etc. Um, with a, a coordinating um, a sort of headquarter, if you will, in in Bonn. Um, and the, the European Secretariat, where I'm based in, is, is uh, located in Freiburg in, in Germany. Um, we work with five um, pathways, transformative pathways. So we, we cover um, everything from uh, social innovation to, um, to resilience, uh, climate change, uh, food systems, etc., in relation to um, sustainable urban development. Um, and our pathways are, uh, are those, obviously, uh, with one of them being a circular development. Um, and of course, as, um, as you might think, or as, as this suggests already, this is very much related to the uh, UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, and um, focusing on the circular development pathway, um, I, I think a good starting point is to, um, to look at, a, at an historic perspective and to look at at, uh, material extraction at, at global resource use um, um, in, in, a, in a longer time sequence. And this graph shows you um, uh, uh, global resource extraction from the um, uh, in the 20th century until today, more or less, um, as well as um, GDP, uh, which is you know, our uh, you know, most used measure of, of, um, of wealth. Um, and um, you see that that for for most of the century, both has been moving really alongside each other, uh, with only a slight sort of decoupling starting here, uh, let's say in the 80s or 90s. Um, but still today, um, uh, you know, both is growing in parallel. Um, and, the, and the point here is that that this um, decoupling effect that uh, between uh, resource use and our economic activity is not really um, is not really occurring. The decoupling effect that is that was promised, that was talked about by, by researchers, that is still sort of the, the 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 idea behind the circular economy, also at the European level, is to achieve that uh, between res between uh, activity and resource use, but also between resource use and and the environmental impact the, that that use is having, um, and um, and because of that, we argue for for uh, for systemic solutions um, for solutions which. Which look at the at, at the problem um, uh, before it occurs, um, and and at solutions which um, you know go beyond um, um, mere efficiency gains, um, which you know would bring about this this kind of decoupling between between the between the resources, but also uh, going beyond uh, what is called end of the pipe solutions, which which uh, uh, you know. Um, tackle uh, toxicity and so on uh, of, of, of our resource use. Um, so holistic uh, solutions are, are needed and, and uh, of course they occur locally or the local uh, scale plays a, a very big role. And another point um, that was also raised before is that um, of course in doing that, uh, looking at, at or understanding the resource flows within your territory, be it national, regional or local, is, is of, is of uh, high importance. And not only that, but also, um, we would argue that that um, looking at at what those flows are um, are used for, what those flows are, where those flows are going, um, is is very much important. Rather than um, relating those um, those flows with um, with GDP um, uh, and so on, but rather looking at 
at, um, at societal services, at societal needs uh, that those materials satisfy. And, and I think that perspective allows um, for a sort of a, a socio-ecologically centered, um, let's say, policy or discussion or debate on the circular economy. Um, and I think that's important because there are also other angles and other debates, which for surely have, have their, um, their right uh, uh, to be. Um, but I think this is um, when, when, when uh, the goal is to put people and the environment at the center of the circular economy, which um, cities do uh, often, then I think this is um, a, a good angle. Um, and of course, cities are key. Um, for this transition in general, I, I mean cities as opposed to regions or, or, or states, because, um, because of the, the, the tremendous uh, material use and, and throughput that cities have, uh, simply because of their consumption patterns, because of the built environment and so on. And uh, here are some, just some uh, figures um, that, uh, you know, sit that, uh, that describe these drivers. We have urbanization happening. Uh, I mean, this is projected to grow a lot in the next 30 years, even more. And uh, today, there are around 55% of people living in, in urban areas, um, consuming, you know, disproportionately uh, or a disproportionate amount of energy um, and associated uh, CO2 emissions. The same counts for material use, but they also generate a lot of of of, um, of GDP of of economic activity. And this is why cities are really, um, you know, both both the problem uh, at, 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 on the one hand side, but also part of the solution because because of their uh, innovation potential. Um, but they're also, especially in the global south, um, uh, very much affected by by um, by the adverse environmental impacts of this resource use. Um, and um, at ICLE, we try to, um, or we are currently sort of building a. a I mean, we have several activities that concern circular cities. I'm going to mention now another uh, one or two, but we're also trying to uh, to put those things together to actually um, come up with a, a sort of a, a support um, uh, package for for cities. And and uh, a part of that package is, of course, a sort of a, a vision or an understanding of of what a circular city could be. And and this is um, uh, this is what, what is on that slide. Um, and um, those pillars are um, uh, well. Number one is is concerned with the with the functions of the cities, and that the circular city would need to sort of uh, uh, horizontally integrate um, circular principles or circularity considerations in everything they do. Um, and um, a second one is, of course, um, retaining uh, uh, value uh, and utility of of materials through um, you know, circular business models, through using things more extensively uh, and longer uh, and so on. Um, a third pillar would of course co uh, concern the material side of it, uh, closing loops where possible. Of course, that is not so easy on the city scale um, because, of, because of the dependency uh, of, of the city um, uh, towards their, their um, surroundings. And, and lastly, the, the, the impact, um, of course, you know, with this uh, wanting to achieve a, a low uh, carbon emission uh, a city with a, a low carbon footprint, regenerating natural systems, and basically providing a, a healthy environment for, for the citizens. So that is uh, kind of at the macro scale. And cities have several ways in which they can engage in this. Um, this is sort of aggregated, uh, of course. Um, and um, ICLID tries to support on, on these on, on each of these elements, really. Um, um, and the first one is, of course, vision development, strategy development. That is um, something that we talk about today a lot, and Leuven has presented theirs. Um, um, of course, the city can also act or should act as a facilitator um, um, of, um, of a dialogue on, on circular economy with other stakeholders, that being business and, and uh, civil society. But I think business is also very important. Um, uh, in their territory, so the city can really push that, that dialogue. Um, the city can, of course, um, uh, uh, utilize circular principles in their own uh, uh, dealings, meaning um, uh, uh, asset management, management of, of city-owned buildings, uh, public procurement, and so on. Also a very, very key one. Um, the city can, to, to some extent, um, uh, put in place economic incentives, um, uh, financial support, grants, subsidies, and so on. Um, 
and of course it can also to a very rather limited extent I would say engage in regulation um, although I want to stress out here that well the city while the city has a limited power in this um, what is I think very important is to to engage in a sort of a multi-level collaboration um, with regional partners with national partners and um, this is a, I mean, a buzzword from the climate debate uh, currently, but I think it very much applies to the circular transition uh, as well. And uh, I know that some cities are, are already doing this or focusing very much on this. Um, and now I will just uh, mention two activities that are, I mean, we, are, we have several uh, projects, uh, European projects, also other initiatives going on, but I just mentioned two that are quite key at the moment. One of it is an is an Horizon project, um, Horizon 2020 project, an innovation action called City Loops, um, where um, we work with uh, around eight cities in in Europe that are listed up here. You can see them here, rather small cities actually, small and medium sized cities, um, to develop a number of of demonstration actions that the city are demonstrating um, in the area of construction waste, but also organic waste. Um, that being from um, you know, uh, software tools uh, to uh, optimize uh, collection and processing of these wastes to uh, material passports uh, to demonstrating, um, you know, higher or possible higher um, recycled uh, concrete content in producing new concrete, which um, which is not certified and cannot be done in large scale projects, but uh, in a, on a smaller scale when the risk, uh, you know, is covered by the city itself. Um, that is possible. So these are these, these are some of the actions. Um, the project has started now in uh, last October, so it will run for a while now. Um, and we also um, try to um, establish or focus very much on replication. I mean, that's that's quite usual for these projects. Um, but it, what is interesting is also that we are together with Metabolism of Cities. That is a, a yeah, sort of a research think tank in, in Brussels that might, some of you might know. We're developing um, sort of a, a circularity assessment methodology for, for cities at the city scale, but also at sector scale, um, um, ending up with a sort of an open access um, dashboard that that will be, that is being built on in the project, but will also um, be built on after the project that is usable for cities uh, later on. Um, and we'll also do a lot of work on procurement uh, as a key enabler for, for the circularity transition. Um, and now a very, a very different initiative, I'm just mentioning it because I will later come back to it, is, um, is the, the Green Circular Cities Coalition that um, is an, um, an inter-regional kind of cooperation with, uh, between Europe and, and East Asia. Um, uh, uh, with the aim to to support cities in, 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 in embarking on, on a circularity transition from strategy to, to implementation and so on, focusing on, on these six areas. And I think um, uh, that aligns with a lot of other strategies as well. We have water food nexus, uh, urban spatial planning, buildings construction, resource management, um, industrial um, symbiosis and green circular procurement. Um, and what this coalition is intent or intends to do, um, uh, developing uh, still or at the beginning still, is really to, um, in those uh, thematic areas, um, bring cities together with solution providers that are um, that could be uh, you know technology providers, uh, um, um, innovative small uh, enterprises, and so on, and knowledge partners uh, to do that. So the, the platform facilitates this um, this triangle dialogue here. And one of the um, recent outputs of that um, is the is the circular uh, uh, strategy from the city of Turku in Finland um, that um, has, um, I think, came out recently. It was developed with uh, with the um, Finnish innovation fund Citra and and uh, and us and of course the city of Turku. Um, I'm just going to to highlight quickly this this strategy and then another one, just to to um, show the difference and 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 show what strategies um, you know can tackle. And uh, what is interesting with the Turku case um, is that it is really um, uh, meant to 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 be transversal and meant to be to be integrating different um, policy priorities in the city. 
That is, um, of course, the, the energy and climate debate. It, it looks at the SICAP integration master plan, energy efficiency agreement, land use, transport, and so on. So this is really um, sort of an, an, a cross-cutting um, document or process, um, aiming to reduce, of course, environmental impacts, um, but also, and that relates to the multi-governance uh, multi aspect, um, aiming to influence uh, national and, and EU governance. And I think that's that's very, very key. Of course, also um, aiming to achieve socioeconomic impacts and uh, and scale up across the region. I think that's clear. It focuses on um, on the food value chain, uh, on nutrient cycles, energy systems. That is, I think, a, p a particularity, as I mentioned. Uh, building and construction, that's clear, and water cycles as well. Um, and uh, and of course, you know, having having a certain um, certain focus on 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 uh, on, on leadership, um, on integration, um, uh, meaning integrating those objectives with broader sustainability objectives. Um, they focus on a bottom-up approach, um, uh, seeking support from from actors across the regions, and placing a, a special emphasis on on social inclusion as well, which I find uh, also interesting. Um, Amsterdam was mentioned before. Uh, in comparison, is is quite far already. Um, um, while the Turku strategy is a, sort of the first step, I would say, towards um, a strategy that also provides, you know, a methodology for monitoring and and all this. Amsterdam already has that, um, and uh, it's composed of, um, let's say, four pillars or four strategies. Um, one is uh, the, the, this uh, donut model that you see here in the in the slide as well. Then you have the strategy that outlines the whole process. You have an implementation plan and a monitoring um, document. I think that is that has not been released yet. Um, and um, with this strategy, what I find interesting here is that they use the planetary boundary um, uh, aspect. So you have here in the donut model, you see inside of the circle, you see societal needs. Again, going back to, to the slide that I showed before, so what, what are societal services that materials should fulfill um, in, in the inside and on the outside you have uh, planets, plan, something like planetary boundaries, not the same as, as the famous ones, but similar. Um, and, and this is, um, and, and, and the circular economy basically um, is, should help fulfill those needs, you know, keeping, uh, being inside of the circle and not trespassing any of the boundaries. So I think that's a nice, a very nice way to, to put it. Um, and uh, they focus on uh, also on food and organic waste, consumer goods, built environment, and so on, uh, with a number of um, of ambitions, of, of, of goals. They're not going to go through all of them. Um, but I think what is, I mean, um, what is important when reflecting about uh, strategies is, um, I think that is recognizing that this is, Still, a quite a new endeavor for all actors who are who are in there, um, uh, not only us but everybody else as well. And I think um, um, most of the strategies can 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 really um, um, be clustered, you know, along this along this nine R model that you see here in the, in the on the slide, um, in in terms of what their, you know, what their primary primary means of implementation are. Uh, is it a strategy or is it something that that looks at Completely um, changing the way we we produce, we consume, etc. Um, or is it focusing on you know recycling, let's say more more or less. And on the other side, you have you have the this the whole debate on on the objectives and whether they are weighted or how do you deal with trade offs. Um, something has has a good environmental impact, but is economically um, not not good, yeah, and, and and not 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 wise to do. And I think. Um, you know, all the all the strategies have to somehow balance this in, in, in some way, and you can see differences in, in that as well uh, in the existing strategy, strategies that are there. But also organizations like us and others have to sort of position themselves in terms of, you know, how, how what do we recommend? What is what is there? And we are currently in that process and um, and um, of course having a having a vision already. But um, um, yeah, so that's that's I think uh, the end of it. If you have any more um, questions, maybe we can address them now. But you can also contact me. Um, yeah, back to you, uh, Christina. Thank you very much. 
Uh, so now we will have a quick questions and answer session. I would like to ask other presenters to uh, come also online, switch on their microphones if it's possible. And I would firstly ask, uh, since Nicola, we just had your presentation, question to you. So, so if we take an account the experience of other cities and other governments, what do you think, what will be the first steps for a city to start transitioning to a more circular? To, to whom was that directed? To you, to you, Nikolai. Ah. Um, well, um, I think I think the, the the first first step would be to 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 mobilize um, uh, you know stakeholders to 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 look at what kind of political um, situation we have, what kind of political political commitment is possible, and um, and then to 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 go on to set up sort of a, a co-creation process. Um, I think that or or get the opinions and and needs and so on of of the stakeholders involved. Thank you. Uh, I would like to have a few questions about uh, discussing some of the barriers when we uh, talk about transitioning to more circular cities. Um, so, uh, Fedra, what, what do you think? What are the, in your experience, uh, what are the main barriers then for starting a circular city? Um, well, I would say um, main barriers, I think and I think Jan referred to it also. I think the first starting point is to get the political will to become a circular city and to frame it in an overall sustainability view. I think the moment you get the top on board in general, there will then be a lot of initiatives. So I would say for me, the barrier would be uh, ensuring that there's political will uh, to join in. And then I think once you have that, that it becomes around finding mechanisms that work for everybody involved. So this would be, for me, um, the next step would then be to ensure that you do a proper mapping of the circular level potential current um, uh, initiatives that be, are being taken, I think, and see whether you can build upon them and like strengthen them or replicate them in other areas. I think uh, um, we are... Um, well, I think ultimately what it comes down to is still it's people. And so I think if people have the will and interest, things will happen and move forward. So um, I think that would be for me what I think is a, the biggest barrier at the moment. I think business models, we will find them. Industry will follow um, as long as there's a you can create a win win uh, for people. It will happen. So, yeah. I don't know, Jan, whether that's also in your as a from a city perspective, whether that's also your your impression. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I have to admit, what what we are doing is a is a bit exaggerating the way we are. But um, I cannot say that everyone at the city level in all departments is completely convinced. So it also has to be in a flexible way. Uh, so for me, it was very important to get the strategy through the city council, get political support. So we, we, we cannot go back. Uh, and I'm not interested in starting with large debates with all the administrations. What we do is we invite people from several departments to our platform and then it starts. Uh, it started with the people working for the sustainability department. They were convinced. They didn't always have all the the um, models and materials, but they were convinced. Uh, then we started to invite someone from the economics department. It was a bit difficult in, in when we started. Was is it really economy or is it something only of the greens? No. Step by step, we got someone from the um, the spatial development development department. We got someone from the the, the how do you call it? It's it's a uh, a kind of city um, company for development of the city. They were involved and step by step in a flexible way. Um, we, we, we are convincing people to work on a horizontal level because circular economy uh, is not uh, has to, to break with the culture of, of silo thinking. 
and at the city level department it takes some time some of the people in the city in the city council in the city government are convinced others when we had the negotiations for the new program for the for the city some of them think well it's about waste isn't it but we are doing that already so it takes some time and when you have a strategic framework where everyone can find themselves in and you and you follow the framework by doing step by step you go third i think thank you uh Ralph, I think you mentioned also in your presentation that you are currently uh, starting to map different challenges for cities. But uh, can you maybe, um, what is your take? What would be the main challenges in the future for a city of Tallinn? Yeah, I think uh, uh, here we, on the very broad level, I think uh, meeting uh, the actual uh, climate and then environmental goals is something which is the main challenge, challenge on the broad level. On the uh, micro level, if you go to the city departments and, uh, and, uh, and, and you start asking them, uh, there are very many other like uh, questions uh, as well. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, and another challenge is, so two broad challenges. One is related to environmental goals because uh, City of Tallinn contributes 50% of all em emissions in Estonia and, uh, and, uh, and the emissions are quite high. And, uh, and, uh, and if the government has agreed to lower significantly the emissions by 2030, then the city of Tallinn or the environment in general, uh, maybe it's not the, like the municipality of city of Tallinn who is responsible for everything, but, uh, but the, the urban environment of, of the city of Tallinn uh, is the main uh, contributor to that and needs to take the most actions as well. And the second part is definitely has been at least uh, related to urbanization. So uh, the city, even though the population of Estonia has not been increasing, the city has been increasing all the time. So more people are moving into the capital, uh, thousands of people every year over the last 10 years. Uh, and that basis and that uh, gives uh, very many uh, problems related to environment, energy, mobility and so on. So these are the main, uh, main uh, challenges and I think they are pretty universal to our cities as well. Thank you very much. And uh, so a question to you, Silla. So um, I think all can agree that uh, architecture or building design or in even sustainable building design is a very important part when you talk about uh, circular cities and more sustainable cities. Um, so, but what? how do you feel yourself as an architect? Um, uh, how would you say th is the level of uh, awareness or knowledge among the architects in Estonia when it comes to circular economy? I mean, if I if I wider the circular economy even more to the to the sus uh, sustainability in general, I think the awareness is getting there, but the implications are maybe not there yet. Uh, so that's why um, I think there's there's still of a seek for for those uh, understandings like um, tackling the yeah the whole lifespan of a building instead of the the calculations of the final result with the with the energy efficiency categories that is being uh, implied. So I think we are still in the need and vast need for for acknowledging it and, and educating architects on those topics. I think the local architectural association is working hard on this. It's one of the biggest tackles uh, or biggest uh, aims at the moment to change the understanding of uh, what is sustainable construction, that it is not only about putting, uh, I call it the stick, uh, sticker architecture, where you just apply the uh, sun panels on the roof, or uh, make a two uh, two layer windows to triple layer windows. I don't think this this is the sustainable architecture from my point of view. I think this could be seen as, as something to that a design understanding that you start from, not that you actually cover your in, initial design into. Mm. 
I'm sorry, uh, I think we have lost Sile. Okay, there sometimes happen technical issues. I think to uh, think from from certain point onwards, not from uh, not from the end of the design. Okay, thank you, Sila. We lost you for a second, but uh, pretty sure we got your uh, message. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we have one question from the uh, listeners, from the audience. Uh, it's about uh, cities and their circular economy strategies. Um, so how much is there diversity among the strategies? Uh, so are they going into different, do they have different approaches or is there more similarities between them? Um, so maybe Fetra or Nikolai, can either you yeah, I don't mind answering. So, Edward, thanks for that question. I um, uh, well, I think afterwards Christina will start a, share the presentation. And so, in the presentation, I mentioned a paper that's a, a two researchers. They've looked at 83 different cities and they've mapped all the circular economy initiatives. So that will give you a good overview of an assessment of what's been done. And so they've classified um, the initiatives into initiatives that tackle infrastructure, so anything to do with buildings and so on. They've tackled, they, the second part is uh, social consumption. So they're then looking at sharing initiatives, food waste, and so on. They have one that looks at urban planning, and then I can't remember the fourth category. But so that said, uh, a lot of the initiatives, they focus around the, well, I, Nicolai mentioned six R's. So there's a discussion around how many there are. Uh, but so a lot of them, they focus around the same. And I would say the city strategies, are uh, even though there's different focus, I think it depends on the size of the city, where they're at, and the, what sectors are in cities and so on. But I think there's some some activities that everybody can implement, whether it's around uh, recycling, reducing waste, um, and uh, I don't know, in terms of building and construction would be for me. But we well, we will be looking with our project also to come up with a publication, but that may be maybe in a year from now. Um, building upon the Petit Bois and the uh, Leopold paper, but adding more cities. So to be continued, I'd say, from our side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And if I could just make one addition to what Sila was saying on the on architecture. So I think one of the interesting things that is going or one of the, one of the interesting facts that I heard at a presentation in December was that about 50% of the buildings or the office buildings are empty. And uh, this is, I think, like quite a big challenge. Uh, I think and now going forward with COVID, maybe we will all work more from home. So I was wondering whether there's any new business models around uh, office buildings that could be uh, invented or, you know, whether we move away from owning your own apartment to, I don't know, leasing it more, not necessarily renting, but whether there's anything that could be done with commercial buildings as well. I don't know whether anybody has a, has some uh, input into that. I have an, I have a I heard actually that uh, in a governmental level they are already tackling that idea that the the most the biggest focus of sustainability goes into renovation and re-inhabiting, uh, and that not and it's not that much about constructing or uh, or starting from zero. So it doesn't really make sense as there's uh, there's already availability and and so basically making existing construction more um, energy efficient. But then the other side. Uh, also trying to create more flexible space out of it and adapting it to other kind of um, programs and functions. I think that this uh, split uh, between home and office uh, is getting even more vaguer uh, and, uh, and as a trend uh, homes are getting bigger and uh, and we will see more homes with home offices uh, as a trend and uh, and uh, and people will have even more difficulties when uh, when not working from home so this is something which definitely is already reality we are all facing and uh, and it is like already behavior aspect that people are now used to it uh, so uh, so uh, i think uh, uh, this process will continue mm -hmm. I would like to add from my side that I think I came across one startup that they uh, 
promote leasing apartments for temporary offices, basically pay, pay by the hour, because yeah. we have we have all these great uh, co-working spaces, but in current COVID situations, not many people want to work there. So, uh, and I know, uh, at least in Estonia, I think we are, it's part of some legislation that in an office, you have to have dedicated spots for workers. So we have also some legislative barriers which uh, need to be changed in the future. But um, thank you, everyone. I think that was, uh, we didn't have more questions. We have a little bit over the time, but uh, I want to thank all the presenters for very interesting and also inspirational presentations. Very, it was very interesting to hear about different projects and initiatives. I uh, really hope that maybe there are some collaboration opportunities in the future and maybe some uh, ideas will reach also those who are searching for them. So thank you from my side. Thank you, Christina, for putting it together. Thank yeah. you, Christina. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.